I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Blue fragrances, right? You hear them talked about all the time. You'll hear that term a lot from me when I'm describing when I'm describing fragrances. A lot of times, I will kind of reference back to blue fragrances. And for some of you out there who are maybe somewhat new into collecting or new into fragrances, you may be like, you know, what is a blue fragrance? Essentially, we've kind of dubbed all these blue fragrances as these like fresh citrus fragrances for men, a lot of them utilizing the note of ambroxan. They all tend to smell somewhat similar just in their composition and their choice of fragrance notes. They're all very fresh, they're all very mass pleasing, they're all very versatile. They're basically fragrances that you can wear anywhere, anytime, any age, no matter how old you are, and they're fragrances that are all gonna be very mass pleasing, they're gonna get you compliments, and really no one is going to dislike them. So that may not sound like a bad thing, and you're right, it's not in that regard, but you have to keep in mind that they can be pretty boring, especially if you're a collector, if you're looking for something unique, you're not gonna find that with any of these blue fragrances, at least not generally. A lot of these are gonna smell very similar, they're gonna share a lot of uh, similar characteristics, and you're not gonna be getting anything new or exciting when you pick any of these up. So I figured since I kind of reference back to blue fragrances all the time, I figured I would go ahead and put a list together, just kind of giving you my top 10 favorite ones, um, just ones I think you should definitely consider picking up. So before we do jump into my list here, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Also turn on post notifications and give this video a like. If you're watching these videos every day and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. All these videos will get delivered directly to you. Makes it a lot easier for you to watch them. And now that we've done all that, let's go and jump right into this list. And I'll also mention that all the links to buy these fragrances will be down below. If you want to check any of these out, you know what to do. Starting off at number 10, we have Issey Miyake Shade of Lagoon. So this one is a new release, came out this year. And as you can probably guess by the notes, this one's got bergamot, it's got lime, and it's got ambroxan. This one also does have an aquatic touch to it as well, which makes it a little bit different than some of the other ones out there. If this one piques your interest at all, I have done a full review on this one, which you can check out. Uh, but just to summarize it, it's not a bad scent. It's a nice iteration of the blue fragrance, but with a little bit of aquatic marine touch. I really like it. It's definitely not a bad release, and it comes in at a pretty competitive price point. Coming in at number nine, we have Nautica Voyage. So this one has been around the block, fellas. You guys have heard of Nautica Voyage at this point. Probably one of the most popular fragrances out there in terms of cheap scents. This one generally comes in at around $10 to $12 for a 100 ml bottle like this one. Very, very affordable stuff, and it really does smell really good. You may think a $10 to $12 fragrance is going to be crappy and it's not going to be worth picking up, but I can honestly tell you that it is worth picking up. It is worth a shot. If you want a fragrance that you can just use as like your beater fragrance, something that you just throw in your gym bag, throw in your book bag, throw in your car or something just to have a fragrance in case you need it, this is the one that I would usually go for. You really can't beat it at that price. Even if you don't wear it on yourself, you can use it as like a room spray, freshen up your house, freshen up your room. That's what I personally use it for, as you can see, down to the very, very end. Um, I did wear it in the beginning when I first got it, uh, but pretty much all this here um, is just from me using it to spray just wherever, just to freshen up the air, basically using it as an air freshener. So it does work for that, but you can also wear the scent. It does have good performance. It smells great on your skin. It smells better on your skin than it does in the air or on a tester strip, that's for sure. So definitely wear the scent if you like it. Uh, who cares if it's cheap? It smells good, it performs good, and it gets you good compliments. So number nine, Nautica Voyage. Number eight, we have Versace Dylan Blue. So this one's making it a little bit low on this list. Main reason why, for me personally, I just got tired of it. So I wore this one a lot when I first got it, and because of that, I just kind of got tired of it. I find myself now reaching for some of the others higher up in the list than this one, but it is still a solid fragrance. Versace is known for making really great fragrances at really competitive prices. This one comes in at around $45, $50 for a 100 ml bottle, which is super solid. This one's got ambroxan, a lot of citrus, a little bit of patchouli, which gives it a little bit of a darker edge. This one has a nice little sweet undertone to it, which some of these do not. So that gives it something a little bit different. Honestly, a very versatile scent. Smells fantastic, performs great. Just lower on the list because, you know, this is my personal list, my personal preference, and I kind of got tired of it. But still a great scent coming in at number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Intense. 
So this is kind of a marine scent here, kind of utilizing the aquatic note with some citrus and a lot of this salty like ambergris backbone. And by ambergris, I do mean ambroxan in this case because they're not going to be using actual ambergris in a scent of this price. And speaking of the price, you know, a bottle this size, which is a uh, 100 mil, comes in at around, I want to say like $50 or so. So really a competitive price and honestly really nice scent here. Performs good, performs better than the original. Uh, this intense version is an eau de parfum. Kind of amped it up a little bit, gave it a little bit more depth in terms of the scent profile and composition. Definitely prefer this one over the original. Just a really nice one to have. Coming in at number six, the only bottle in this list that isn't actually blue, this one is Prada Lunarosa Carbon. So you're probably thinking, what gives? You know, this isn't a blue fragrance. The bottle is black and red um, and silver. You know, what's up? You're right, the bottle itself is not blue, but the scent is. This one is almost a carbon copy of Sauvage, if you just saw what I did there. This one does have bergamot, it does have some other citruses as well. Along with that, it also has a very prominent ambroxan note and a lot of lavender. This one is a more smooth and well-rounded version of Sauvage. A lot of people don't like Sauvage because of the harsh edges that it has. It's very um, in your face and sharp. This one basically smooths out all of the harsh edges of Sauvage. It makes it a little bit more mature um, and almost makes it a little bit more um, upscale as well. So yeah, if you want a more tamed down version of Dior Sauvage, this is the one you're going to want to go with. Really, really nice one here, Prada Luna Rosa Carbon. Coming in at number five, we have Invictus Aqua 2018. So this one is a follow-up or a flanker to the very, very popular and very successful Invictus Aqua 2016. That fragrance was discontinued shortly after its release and it had everyone in a frenzy. A lot of people were looking for the older 2016 bottles to stock up on, including myself. Invictus Aqua 2016 is one of my favorites for summertime. Really nice aquatic scent here with you know a lot of that ambroxan kind of like sea salt type of smell in the base. Really, really nice one here. And again, this is another one that goes in a little bit more of an aquatic direction, giving it something just a little bit different than the other ones. This one's a great compliment getter though, and it performs good. It smells great. You can wear it for about anything. Just one of those scents that really most everyone has in their collection and for good reason. Definitely kills it for the summertime. Great, great scent. This one is coming in at number five. Coming in at number four, we have Roja Parfums Elysium. So you're probably shocked to see this one only at the number four spot. The only reason why I'm putting it here is just because this one is more expensive and not everyone is going to want to pay the price of this one. Yeah, this is my personal list, so you know I could have put it up higher if I wanted to, but I also want to somewhat cater to you guys. Just because this fragrance is expensive doesn't mean it's the best. And you know, I fully understand that. I get that. You know, I don't care about the price tag of this. If this came in a $50 bottle, I would still love the scent as much as I do. But I'm also kind of making this list for you guys, trying to make it to where you can pick up a lot of these for yourself. And I didn't want to put this at the number one or number two and you know, expect you guys to go out and purchase it because really if you don't have the budget for it, I don't want you to stress about it and try to save up for it, just buy some of the other ones. But this one is and pretty much always will be one of my favorites, especially for summertime. I love Elysium. You know, this is kind of one of those blue fragrances, but really kind of takes a little bit more of an interesting twist. This one utilizes the note of vetiver a lot, which gives it like a mature, classy, upscale vibe. Smells very high-end, very luxurious, and I just love this one. Coming in at number four, Roja Parfums Elysium. So coming in at number three, the only fragrance I don't actually have a bottle of anymore, so don't, don't kill me for this one, guys. This one is Blue de Chanel. And really, in this case, I'm talking about the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, or the Parfum. Here, somewhat recently, I've smelled the new Parfum version, and that one's probably my favorite one. I much prefer that one over the Eau de Parfum. And I did own a bottle of the EDP a while back. I just ended up getting rid of it to purchase something else. But I am very familiar with Blue de Chanel. I love the scent itself, and I'm really kicking myself for getting rid of that bottle. But I do plan on picking up a bottle of the Parfum sometime in the future. That scent is really kind of what kicked off this blue fragrance wave. It really kind of revolutionized the fragrance game for men, and I'm really a big fan of Blue de Chanel. It smells incredible, and it's coming in at number three. Coming in at number two, we have Dior Sauvage. So I've already talked about this one a little bit when I was talking about Prada Carbon. This is really doesn't even need to be talked about. I'm just going to leave it at that. Dior Sauvage coming in at number two. 
a great blue scent with incredible performance. It just works. I don't even know why I was about to describe how Dior Sauvage smells because I'm pretty sure everyone has smelled it at this point. So coming at number one, we have Bulgari Aqua Atlantique. So this probably isn't a surprise to you either. I've talked about this one a ton this summer. No, I'm not getting paid to talk about Bulgari Aqua Atlantique or anything. I just love the scent so much and because of that I featured it in a lot of videos and I wore it a lot. This is one of those dumb reach fragrances for me. It just kind of worked for me. It's the one that I often gravitated towards just when I was heading out of the house and I needed to pick something up and spray it on. This is what I was choosing. I did decant some of this bottle but I mean for the most part um, what's left here a little bit is because I wore a lot of it. Um, I do have a full 100 ml ready to go for next summer at this point which I'm excited for. Really missed this scent already but at the same time I am ready to be into fall. Um, I wore this one a lot. Fantastic, fantastic scent. Probably one of the best performing ones in this list. In fact looking at all of them this one does have the best performance in terms of both projection and longevity. Even beats out Dior Sauvage in performance which is pretty crazy. Over 12 hours longevity, very strong projection. This stuff just works and it does have a little bit more of a unique touch being that it does have that signature Bulgari Aqua DNA. Really, really nice one. Coming in at number one, a must have. So guys, that was it for this video. That were my top 10 best blue fragrances in my collection. You know, these are all really solid scents. And again, they do get some hate, which I can understand why. Nothing really all that different here with these and a lot of them do share a lot of similarities. But you can't deny the fact that they do all work. They do all perform good. They do all pull compliments. They all can be worn any time of the year. If you're looking for a versatile scent, you know, all of these are going to have you covered. So make sure you let me know down below in the comments which blue fragrances are your favorites. You know, if I miss some, let me know which ones that I could have put in the list. Again, these are just the ones that I owned, but I'd be curious to hear which you guys think as well. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss when I post. And that's going to do it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.